But it's a great note on which to introduce our next speaker to find out what he's planning for the company that he set up in 1981, from one leisure retail outlet in Sydney to becoming one of the world's largest retailers and corporate travel management companies now present in 23 countries. And we're very pleased to welcome Graham Screw Turner, CEO of Flight Center. who apparently is in quarantine. So, hi, Screw, how are you? Good, good seeing. All right, are you in, uh, are you in Brisbane? No, I'm actually in Sydney, um, and uh, I go to Brisbane tomorrow, so uh, with, with a bit of luck. We, we in Australia, we never really know exactly uh, whether we'll get where we're meant to go, you know, because <laughs> our borders get shut overnight, and, uh, but we're pretty hopeful. Right, okay, so I was curious, you know, I read about, you got the nickname Screw as a schoolboy, and apparently it derives from the famous Turner brand of screwdrivers. So I'm curious, like, what was it like to grow up with a nickname like that, Screw? I uh, look, um, I, went, uh, I went to university after, I went to boarding school, where I got that name, the name Screw. I went to university and I tried to live up to it, but uh, it didn't work very well. So, uh, but anyway, uh, no, it's just stuck. It's stuck and uh, we travel overseas and uh, some of my friends were with me. So I'm afraid it's, it's with me for, um, for the rest of my life, for sure. <laughs> Why not? It's a good name. It's a good name, you know. Um, so let's get to the, to the news of the moment, which is uh, the fact that you announced your results last uh, yesterday. And uh, despite the fact that, so I'm just going to share the highlights, right? TTV came down by 74.2% to $3.9 billion, right? Your revenues came down by 79.1%. Leisure is still at 16% of usual levels. It's corporate travel that is making a bit of a comeback, and it now represents 55% of TTV. But despite that, today, screw, your share price went up by 5%, right? So you must be happy. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I don't know what happens with that, but um, yeah, we, we lost $500 million and our share price went up 5%. So imagine if we made $500 million, uh, it'd be a totally different thing. But yeah, it's, uh, it's tough times, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, you had to issue about $1.4 billion in refunds nationally to customers throughout the pandemic, which must have been painful. Yeah, well, that was, that was in Australia only. I think it was more like about $2.4 billion elsewhere. And, and the problem, you know, the, the issue was, as I'm sure a lot of people in travel know, that um, that's not what you set up for as an organisation. You set up to take money, not to... Um, not to refund it, as is a lot of our operators. So it was a tough, yeah, you know, it was a tough time, but uh, we got through that, and uh, you know, we're we're slowly but surely uh, growing back again. Right. So you feel like you're turning the corner, but you know, in Australia, I remember um, I listened to you speak at a Kappa event. I think it was in September, and you said that the country was being run by chief medical officers who are not interested in the economy. And then in quotes, you said, our country is going to be ruined. So a year from now, you know, a year from when you said it, how do you feel about it now? Is it totally ruined or do you have a chance to come back? Uh, look, um, it, it's, it's pretty bad. You know, it's pretty grim here um, for a few reasons, you know, partly because of the lockdowns, the total disunity between the states and the federal government. Um, it's... And, 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 you know, the states are in open warfare with each other, uh, particularly now that there's uh, infections in New South Wales and Victoria, but, um, you know, the other states don't have that. Don't have that. So uh, our vaccination rollout hasn't been ideal, but um, it is getting on track now, you know, and um, something like we're getting up towards 60% of people have had at least one vaccination. So you know, it's th there are some light, some signs at the end of the uh, light at the end of the tunnel at the moment. But um, you know, it, and, and it's not only Australia. I mean, we we haven't had a lot of infection, so people aren't used to it. You know that, and they think it's something. Um, I, you know, I, I think you know. I've just been over to the UK. That's why I'm in quarantine, and uh, there they're getting thirty or forty thousand case new infections a day, and they're living with it. 
uh, and um, and we get a thousand or, or so a day here, and um, you know it's it's a total disaster. You know, and it is about vaccinations to a certain extent, but we're getting there, and um, so I'm 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 a bit more confident now. But um, the, the fact that CHOs, Chief Health Officers, still are largely running the states it is a worry. It really is because they they only take one factor into account, and, and Australia is going to suffer because of right. this, undoubtedly. Yeah, but I guess, you know, the fact that Flight Centre is global, so, you know, like markets like Singapore now, we're moving into, you know, an endemic state. So at least, you know, with a global business, you can actually kind of balance out the, you know, the negatives and the positives. And, you know, for, for you, you've had a heck of a journey. Like you started in 1973 and you and two mates bought a couple of double-decker double bus, buses in England and then you began top-deck travel and then you returned to Australia in 1981 and you opened the first flight centre shop, right? And then you floated the company in 1995. So heck of a journey. Was there ever a time in that journey that came close to what you're facing now? Uh, look, um, it's a long time. I mean, it's nearly 50 years. Um, and um, in the early days in Top Deck, you know, we were running buses and, and these were pretty basic buses. They were fitted out. Um, they were quite successful, but we were running them all over the world, uh, you know, all over Europe, uh, North Africa, and then through Asia to Kathmandu and, and even through Australia um, in the late 70s. Um, and so we, there were plenty of times there where uh, we, we had our um, our challenges, and uh, certainly in the late seventies, early eighties, about seventy nine, eighty one, we went very close to running out of cash. You know, we had about eighty buses then running all over the place, but we didn't have a lot of cash. So, but there's no doubt that this this um, you know there's there's been like nine eleven and and the um, you know the the, the recession in in 2008-9 but no this is um you know for an organization like this this is this is far worse than anything we've seen before far longer and yeah. uh, a lot of people in travel will be feeling the same way it's 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 a it's a huge getting through this if you're in travel and you can get through this uh, well, congratulations. It's it's going to be a, a long road. Yeah, I mean, the survivors are still here, right? You know, and, you, and you've been quoted as saying that most of our major lessons were learned through our mistakes. And you said quite often we'd make the mistake, same mistake three or four times and we really bloody learn. So, you know, what was that one mistake you made three or four times? And Screw, before you answer that, I want to just go to the audience, uh, the virtual audience. And, you know, I want to invite you to share uh, your mistake. You know, one mistake that you made in the past and the lesson you learned from it and we can share. This is a confessional. So, um, Graham, uh, why don't you make a confession first? I look... <laughs> The big mistake, and I just mentioned it really, is is um, if you're in business, the one thing you can't do is run out of cash, and you've got to keep a very good close eye on your cash. Um, and, and as I, I said in the late seventies, um, we basically ran out of cash. And um, I, I remember the story then: um, our printers, our brochure printers, um, we didn't we didn't have enough money to pay them. You know, I, I can't remember what it was. It was probably 30 or 40,000 pounds. And so we decided to take them out to lunch at an Indian restaurant. And I said, um, look, we'll pay for lunch, but I'm afraid we don't have money to pay for your brochures. Anyway, um, they'd already had a couple of bottles of wine, so they were okay, but um, it was a big lesson for me. And um, although we, we haven't come close to that before, it was a lesson that I know in other businesses that we've started and that, that it's absolutely crucial. Cash is king. You've just got to have enough cash flow to keep you going. It's um, and, and and in this COVID time, for a lot of travel businesses, this is absolute key. We've got the resources, you know, to raise money and to raise capital, but a, a, a lot will struggle more with that. And um, anyway, yeah. that that's that's my big lesson, I okay. guess. I like that exchange. You know, curry for cash. Not bad. I, I'm, I'm I'm sure that it still works 
in today, today's time. You're also a big believer in people making the difference. I mean, you speak a lot about it, and some of the quotes that you, you share is like, if you have the right people, that's twice as important as having the right location. And the biggest difference you can make to your is how your people are working for the same outcomes inside the company rather than what your competitors are doing outside. So, But it gets harder, right? I mean, you, you've really grown the business. Is there one principle or philosophy that you stuck to to that still remains to this day? Uh, look, I, I think it, it's a, that's a difficult question. Um, it, it is really important. Your people are everything in an organisation and, and we, and, my, and I know our leadership team um, in our 23 countries, you know, it's been really tough over the last 18 months, but we, we've all stuck together. We're all still working pretty well together. And I think that that is, that, that is really important. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I can't remember the rest yeah. of the question, actually. Yeah, but Graham, you know, I mean, screw, sorry. Yeah? I'm going to call you screw. That, you know, despite yeah. what we say about people are everything, I mean, travel companies have just been shedding people during this hmm. 18 months, right? And so we're kind of not living up to what we say, people are everything, we've just been shedding them. How do you feel about that, you know, contradiction? Yeah, and, and we have too. You know, we've gone from 21,000 people to about eight and, and we are building it up again, but uh, you know that's that's that was one of the hardest things. And um, uh, we, we we did keep you know our our, our key, key people, our core people, our 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 highest producers, and all that sort of thing. But I'm sure if you're one of the people who we let go, uh, you know you're not that happy about it. And when when we need more people, which we will over the next 12 months, uh, that'll be really the challenge. You know, who's going to come back? Who's going to come back and um, help us out over the next uh, year or two as we grow back to where we were, uh, you know, to 2024? Right. I just want to go to the poll where we did ask the uh, audience, you know, whether they are more optimistic now than they were in March. And the good news crew is that, you know, almost 70 percent say that they are more optimistic and they're seeing some recovery in some markets. So at least we're on the, the right road. All right. And um, so other than people, I know Flight Center has made a lot of investments in tech the last 10 years. Incredible transformation there. What's your personal relationship with tech? Look, I, I'm um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I was famously quoted about 1999 as saying that I think the internet wouldn't be, wouldn't last, uh, we'd only be here for a short time. So um, it probably hasn't been brilliant, um, but you know, um, you know, technology helping people in travel is is obviously important. You know, pe you know, um, n not only helping our people uh, serve our customers, but you know, helping our customers um, do the things they want to do themselves as well. So, you know, I, I certainly accept that technology, the right sort of technology is incredibly important, um, not only to be more productive, but to offer a better service to your customers. And uh, that's certainly in our corporate travel, that's really important, but it's important in nearly every travel field now. Right. Uh, if, if you're running a tour, it's probably a little bit different, um, but, you know, still, how you back up, understand who your customers are and, and right. how they want to travel again is, is obviously important as well. Do you feel that the bet that you made on technology, I mean, you invested a lot over the years in technology, saved you from the same fate as Thomas Cook? Because you could have gone that way, right? You could have gone that way as well. Yeah, look, it's probably a lot of differences. Um, you know, it's... it's it's probably almost, um, I, I don't know the exact reasons behind Thomas Cook in the end, um, but, but in the end, they, they, they didn't have the cash and that to survive. So there's a whole range of things. They were in a different marketplace to us. But, you know, it, it's not going to be easy for travel uh, to come back. Um, you, you will need to stick to your basics to be really good at what you do, to, to really be able to look after your customers. And I think um, and, and, and to have the, the, the backing, you know, the, the financial backing, the cash flow to be able to really survive a number of years uh, to come out of this at a, at a level where, you know, that we certainly want to be. We, we, we certainly want to be there. Um, not, we, we just don't want to survive. We want to come back and prosper. And uh, that's a really, um, you yeah, know, that's, 
that's going to be a tough ask over the next few years for a lot of travel companies. Okay. So what do you think the government's relationship should be with tech giants like Google, Facebook? You know, I, I think in Australia, you know, you've been fighting back against the, the tech giants as well. We see some, uh, you know, similar clampdowns in China as well. What do you think government's relationship should be with tech giants? Yeah, look, it, it's not a field of my expertise, so I can give you my opinion. Um, there is we no love doubt your that opinion, that... Screw. You don't need to be yeah. an expert. <laughs> yeah, well, look, it, it's, 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 a tough, it's a tough ask. You, you go from um, companies like Apple that give us a lot of great products to Google and Microsoft that dominate their areas. Um, and, and, and um, you know, it, 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 is, it is, can be a bit annoying. I mean, a lot of the things is, you know, Amazon, for example, which you could argue is a tech giant, um, it's taking a lot of um, business away from a lot of smaller players all over the world. And the, the big question is, okay, is it a level playing field? And um, in, in sometimes it is but sometimes it isn't, not just because of their size, but because, for example, if you're a traditional travel agent, more you know, like uh, the Flight Centre brand is, you're paying a lot of money in tax for people, whereas if you're a virtual player, you, you pay very little tax in terms of um, personal income tax. So, you know, and, and, and for example, in the UK, our shops, you pay a huge amount of council tax on your shops. Whereas um, obviously the virtual players don't play that. So I think there needs to be a realigning for sure. And, and the governments are starting to look at this. You know, where, does it, where do we need to realign? You know, it's all about personal data and, and that too. But yeah, you know, that doesn't worry me so much. It's, it's equalizing, you know, the costs in that. And it's not for, just for the benefits of businesses like ours, it's for the benefits of society so that people are contributing the, the, the right amount of tax, yeah, not just from company tax, from, from other areas yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, totally it's got implications beyond travel, yeah. right? So, so I'm just going to go to the audience and we're going to ask, um, you know, what do you think of those billionaires fighting to be the first to travel to space, right? And I'm going to ask the audience to take the, the poll now uh, about what do they think about that, uh, whether it's distasteful, is it pioneering or is it wasteful? Do you want to go to space, Grant? Screw? No, not at all. I, I couldn't think of anything less that I'd want to do uh, at the moment, you know, I think. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, obviously it drives some people and, and it may um, bring in some innovations and that that are useful to humankind. But, um, no, I have no, no desire whatsoever to go into space. So I think um, uh, if Richard wants to do that, well, good on him and, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But you are a qualified vet. Did you know that today is International Dog Day? I did not, actually. No. Well, I just found out <laughs> Sorry, today. And no. apparently this week is also Mosquito Week or something like that. But anyway, you are, you are a qualified vet and an environmentalist. And your family has committed more than $18.5 million to a Southeast Queensland conservation project, right? So sustainability, big topic in travel right now. How do you think corporate TMCs like you should play a part? How are you playing a part? <clears throat> oh, look, I mean, you know, we, we have a, our family has a, a, a desire. Australia has a major problem with extinction of its native animals. And uh, we, we, you know, it, it is becoming worse and worse. And so we want to do something to help that. Um, but uh, what, was your, what was your question? So, what was your question? Well, how, how does a corporate TMC like, oh, you yeah. know, FCM play a part in ensuring that your travelers travel sustainably? Yeah, this is a, this is a being a, a big question. And, you know, I, I, we don't have all the answers at the moment, but it's, a, it's about us helping our clients as well as us being sustainable, us helping our clients be sustainable. And, you know, what, one of the things we've just been talking about in the last few days is, you know, with things like Zoom, um, encouraging um, people, uh, our clients, our major clients, look, if you don't need to travel by air, well, fine, do it on Zoom. You know, okay, we make money out of people traveling, but we also want to make sure that our clients can travel sustainably. And, and a lot of our clients, particularly the bigger 
um, you know, multinationals, that, that is one thing that they're really interested in. So, um, you know, it's one of the things that sustainability is going to be incredibly important in travel, particularly when, you know, air, air transport is, does contribute to, you know, um, global warming through the carbon. Uh, but it's about 3%, I think, 25 or 3%, but that's significant. So um, as an industry, not just because we think it's, um, we're worried about climate change, but as an industry, we do um, need to try to do as much as we can about that. I, I, I certainly don't have the answer, all the answers, but. Yeah, it's a balancing act, isn't it? You know, it's like you, we are in travel, we want people to travel, but at the same time, we have to be aware that travel does certain things. So, so now I'm going to ask you to rate one to 10, okay? The, the three things I'm going to call out. So on how much you agree with this statement, right? One is being you agree the least, and then 10 being you agree the most, okay? Consumers will pay more for sustainable travel options. What's the number? Yeah, eight. Eight, okay. 50% of corporate travel will not return. Uh, two. Okay. The future is remote work. People will not want to return to the office. Three. Okay. Travels change forever. Uh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're really on the side of like, you believe that travels change Forever. Okay. You famously said once when someone asked you about USP, and I love this quote, USP, you said, I'd never even heard of this concept before. I thought it was some form of contraception. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you stay relevant as a leader in, you know, such fast changing times right now? Uh, look, um, that, that's a, you know, I, I'm an avid reader and um, I'll read anything and uh, our people will be, um, always complaining about how, you know, in terms of um, our strategy, the way we do our strategy and um, the way we talk about USPs or, or CVPs or, or you know, uh, the, the latest, the thing over the last few years we've been doing a lot with, which is Procter & Gamble's Playing to Win, which you may have heard about it. And um, so, you know, I, I'm... Um, I, I think you, you've just got to be interested in it. You've got to keep up to date to a certain extent and try to keep some consistency as well, not change every, every, every few years and in the way you work. But uh, no, I, I, and, and, and a lot of it is, you know, because we've got, uh, we're a multinational company, um, we, we've got people everywhere. I learn a lot from the people, um, you know, and, and we have a lot of smart people in a lot of different places. So, uh, and and they, they have no problem telling me where I'm going wrong, I can assure you. I mean, that's an important part of being a leader is for people to be able to tell <coughs> you off, right? And not for you to always be dictating. And I'm, I'm sure that you get quite a lot of, uh, you know, feedback from your, <laughs> from your team. Okay, we're going to wrap up with rapid fire, uh, screw. So, you know, uh, one word answer, okay? China or America? China. Maldives or Iceland? Maldives. Koala or kangaroo? Koala. They're so cute, aren't they? When do you think we can visit Australia again? December. This December? Yes. I love your optimism. Okay, I'm there. Okay. And then finally, one piece of advice you shared was, whatever you do, don't write one of those sickly corporate books that glorify the company. We need to have all our dot, dot, dot mistakes in there. That's what really shaped us. So if you were to write a book, which you are, I presume, what would it be called? Actually, I haven't even thought about this, but um, there was a book called, um, that was called Screw the Rules. So that's not a bad title, I reckon. <laughs> Screw the Rules. I like that. I look forward to it. Can I be your ghostwriter? Yes, yeah, sure. I need one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Screw. Thank you for joining us and enjoy your last day of quarantine and back home to Brisbane. Stay safe. Thank you, Screw. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.